Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, coming to you from Mount Airy. Just a little spot, a little blip on the North Carolina map. But this, my friends, is the stomping grounds of the one and only Mr. Andy Griffith. You may have seen the television show, you and multi-thousands of others who have seen the most popular syndicated, one of the greatest television shows of all time. And even though the map states this is the name, folks around here call it Mayberry. It's my second channel, Daily Vlog Channel. It's the Daily Woo. Everyone gets in the spirit here. It's pretty fantastic, actually. Check out the water tower. Look what's right smack dab in the middle of it. That's pretty cool. I like that. In December of 2011, my mom and I were up in this area for the holidays. We have some family that lives a few hours away. I only had a couple hours to spare, so I drove over. I was in town for a very short time. I didn't get to see everything. I'm gonna rectify that today. I'm gonna nip it. Nip it in the bud. And speak of the devil. Here comes old Barn himself. How you doing, Mr. Fife? This is it, where the idea was generated, was formulated in his mind. He took this exact street and ran with it. And the rest is history. Walt had Marceline, Andy had Mount Airy. Of course, there's speculation on both points, but it's fun to see the little tidbits and hints and put the clues together, right? He only needed that one bullet. I don't think he ever fired it though, did he? I don't think he ever fired that one bullet, but he only needed one. I picked myself up a coffee and they have a map in here on the location of all the visitors. Looks like most people are from the East Coast for sure. Not a lot of West Coasters stop by here. And there's a photo of Don himself signing this exact picture. Man, I love that guy. Mr. Furman. Not only is this like stepping back in time, it's also like putting yourself back in a piece of television history. Here's the Darlin's truck. Oh, wow. The courthouse. They have the courthouse here also. And look at the front door. Wonder if it's open. Oh my gosh, this is blowing my mind right now. A recreation of the sheriff's office and jail cells. Was not expecting this. This is awesome. <laughs> Mind blown. I think we all at some point in our lives wanted to be as cool, calm, and collective as Andy sitting behind this desk. Oh, check it out. There's one of uh, Aunt B's pickle jars. Care kerosene, cute kerosene keeps me warm. And maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's in good taste for them to be still in moonshine, so close to the high school. It just, it just doesn't seem right. See, if I did that, they'd lock me up, throw away the key. Anybody seen the key? Anybody? Look at these three guys just chilling there next to the gas pumps. And there are the gas pumps. This service station opened in the 1930s by a man named Wallace Smith. Andy used to go in here and get himself one of these. When in Rome, do as the Romans. When in Mount Airy, do as the Griffiths. Oh, that's good. Now I'm not usually one to do a tour 
But in this case, I'm making an exception. That's my car. That's my Uber <laughs> for today. Floor it! Now you can see, as you can see, you can see granite foundation, granite steps, granite columns. Back in those days, granite was cheap and we had plenty of it. So at first I would have thought that was stone, but I guess I was I was taking it for granted. It's always better to be in the front of the squad car than in the back. So I was in the back. Well, I'd be, you know, I'd, be always, I'd be in trouble, right? Well, yeah, and it always brings back memories for a lot of us. Not, no, not me. Oh, not okay. me. I've never good. been in the back. I've never been in the back of a police well, car, good. as far as you know. This is a 1965. 1965. Now, as far as the car itself is concerned, they are original. Now, as far as being a Mayberry squad car, they're repping. What happened was in 1964, a show everyone in production. Ford Motor Company went to Andy and said, listen, we will furnish you all the cars for the show if you will use nothing but our products. And he said, hey, that sounds great. So that's what happened. 1960 to 1968, Ford Motor Company furnished Andy with one new squad car in. That's where Andy's first job was inside yes. there. And what was it before it was Walker's? Lamb Drugstore. And what? Lamb Drugstore started in 1945. And Andy gets a phone call and says, Come on, Barn, let's go. He's at the intersection of Pine and Main. Right there's Pine and Main. The intersection of Pine and Main. The intersection of Pine and Main. There it is, right show. there. There's Pine right and, Main. and Main. They went to go find Ernest T. Bass. Ernest, that's where Ernest T. was supposed to be hanging out. So he'd be standing right over there. He'd standing right at that light pole. Old oh, Ernest T pole. would be yeah. right there. He got a Grammy for a gospel music album he recorded after the Andy Griffith show ended. Here's Andy's home place. Andy was born in 1926. Now all the streets that you'll hear mentioned in this show, anything you hear a street mention, that's a street here in town. When Andy's going up, man, he had a town drunk named Otis. If I understand, Otis was a great guy. If you need some help doing something, you call him and he'll come and help you right after you got off work. Help you mow your yard, help you move whatever you had to do, whatever. But you better get it done between Monday through Thursday, because on Friday when he got off work, he had a good time until a Sunday night. Years later, this is where he came up with the idea of Wally's service station that was on the show. Because this was Wally's service station, and it was Wally's service station on the show. <laughs> Go all the way back to 1960 when the show first started. Opie skips a rock. You got a brake light out. All right, thank you. Uh-oh. You got to call Barney. Yeah, I got to call well, Wally. Don't, don't let Barney know. Yeah. Well, Barney gave you a ticket. Wally yeah, will fix, yeah, Wally yeah, will Wally fix it. it. But uh, Opie skips a rock across the water. The problem was Opie couldn't get the rock to the water. He was too little. I mean, he was just a little thing. Right. So they came up with this brilliant idea, they're going to set a guy up behind him that's going to throw the rock. So if you watch, up he reaches down, and when he comes back up, he has nothing in his hand. And he throws. Well, when his arm gets about right here, the rock hits the water. Well, that can't happen. There's no way that can work. Today wouldn't be a big deal. You know, they got the technology, they can make it work and figure out how to... CGI. You know, yeah, whatever it is. They can get it straight down. They make those days, they did. So... Their solution was, Opie reaches down, comes back up, still has nothing in his hand. He throws, they cut away. They never again show that rock hitting the water. Watch it. It's just all, it's all an illusion. I'm gonna go back and watch that, that's interesting. Like I said, you gotta go back to 1960, first couple of episodes. The first the first season. Well, yeah, it don't, it don't even last the whole first season. Just have, Having like the first four episodes. I'm gonna check it out. That tour was amazing. The coolest thing was all the street signs located here in Mount Airy. He mentioned in the show itself. Pretty fascinating. This is little Ben. Hey, little Ben. Ben. He <laughs> found me. I don't know how, but he found me. How'd you guys? How'd you guys know I was in town? Uh, when he said you was in uh, Wiffle. That's what we know. So you used your Columbo-like research skills. Yeah. We was in the middle of eating lunch. Yeah. And, and you saw the RV? Yeah. When no, we, we watch, was at home watching when your videos. When we're eating lunch, we watch your videos. So 
halfway, I was halfway through my sandwich and Casey was like, he's probably in Mount Airy right now. I said, let's go, let's go. You guessed <laughs> right. I like your shirt too. I love the sand lot. Now I'm going to check out the museum right here at the Playhouse. These are two of the original keys used for the jail cell. That was actually screen used in every episode of the show. And check this out. Here's Otis shirt. This is the actual salt and pepper suit that Barney would wear on his dates with Thelma Lou. That is absolutely incredible right there. It's divided into sections. This particular section is currently being remodeled, but they have moved some of the props to the front window. These were all used on the show. The gavel you see here on the left was used in nearly every episode when he's sitting at his desk and the candlestick phone was used in the last five seasons. Man, that's, that's pretty awesome. This was Don Knotts' chair. When he left the show after five years, the producers took the chair and had it bronzed. Then they had the cast and crew sign the back. Rockford and Haymore represent the cross streets used in the last black and white episode starring Jerry Van Dyke. And just a word of warning, this particular cutout do not look too deeply into his eyes. You might end up hypnotized. Over here, we have Goober's original hat. He cut the holes in this himself and had it bronzed and dedicated it to the museum. That's the one he worn, his signature cap. I should also mention that that is the original desk. You can barely see it with the glare on the window and these are the original doors, the blue doors, right back there. Pretty freaking cool, right? And they even have a little motorcycle sidecar, property of the sheriff's department. That door won't stay closed. I do love me some old theaters. This one, I actually get to go inside. You can see how the screen pulls down for movies and they use the stage for bluegrass music but it still has that old school nostalgic feel to it, doesn't it? Even the checkerboard floors, popcorn, an old school snack bar. I like it. And this was actually where a very unknown Andy Griffith movie premiered, A Face in the Crowd. Not a lot of people have seen that one and it premiered right inside there. And there he is up on that very stage, in front of the microphone. If you ever wanna see the darker side of his acting abilities, check that movie out. It's pretty good. This is also a pretty notable place, the Snappy Lunch. He was said to come in here many times and grab himself a hot dog and eat a tasty meal. However, they close very early and I missed the boat on this one. They're closed for the day. Wham, 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 wham. But next to Opie's candy store is Floyd's Barbershop, which I think is still open. It was said that Andy himself got his hair cut in there quite a few times. Wouldn't it be cool if I got my hair cut inside the same barbershop that he did? Why not? You know what? Heck it. I'm going to get my hair cut in the same barbershop as Andy did. You know, you only live once. Why not? Why not do it? Embrace the moment. Embrace it. And now for the grand reveal. Looks good, right? They have a Facebook page also that they're gonna put my picture on. I'll post it on my Facebook too, the Daily Wu on Facebook. You see the pictures they took of me sitting in the bar. They used to have six barber chairs and it used to go all the way back. They enclosed it. Now there's just two of the original old school barber. You gotta wonder, did he sit in the same barber chair I did? I have to say that hairstyle looks pretty darn good on you, sir. The next location is located about 10 to 15 miles outside of town. A very pivotal point and spot mentioned multiple times in the show. We are now entering the city limits of Pilot Mountain. Mount Pilot, Pilot Mountain. Coincidence? You be the judge. I have to wonder how many times this place was mentioned on the show. It was considered to be the next town over from Mayberry and very similar downtowns. And Pilot Mountain is the next town over from Mount Airy. You do the math on it, 
it just makes sense. And a few miles straight up on the outskirts of town is what the town was named after. There is a real peak at Pilot Mountain. If you are afraid of heights, the rest of this video might not be for you. Here it is. Look at that. Ta -da! Ta -da 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 -da! Holy cow. This is up here. The real life Pilot Mountain. Whoa. Whatever you do, don't look down. Sure is beautiful. Could stay up here for a long time. Just do a little contemplating and thinking. Very windy though. Normally in the description underneath every day's vlog, I put where I was yesterday, as well as one year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and four years ago. Today I'm gonna mix it up a little bit and put some different links. I'm gonna put a link to the Andy Griffith movie, Face in the Crowd, that maybe you haven't seen. I'll put the trailer link that someone uploaded up on YouTube, as well as when I visited the intro to the Andy Griffith show, when Opie skips the rock across the water, that famous beginning to the show. That's in California. I did an unedited vlog there many years ago, as well as when I visited this neck of the woods five and a half years ago in December of 2011. I covered way more today, but if you want to watch that older video, one other thing, the museum used, not, used to not allow anyone to take photos or videos inside. They have hence changed their rules, and I was able to take video and pictures inside today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. The oh man, this is almost out. This is almost gone. Should I? Vlog?